Hi everyone and welcome to my sewing corner. This is episode four in the DIY couture series where I'm showing you how I'm making a couture dress at home. In episode three, I talked all about underlining the fabric. So it's a silk organza layer underneath the fashion fabric. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I cut out all of my pattern pieces and basted them together to assess the fit and then finally stitched them together on my sewing machine and then did a lot of hand stitching around the arms, the neckline, all of the seam allowances are hand stitched into the organza so you'll see how I did that and the hem. So at the end of this assembly process, the shell of the dress is completed. And then in the next video, it'll be all about lining the dress, which is the last step. Now let's just jump right in and I'll show you how I assembled the shell of this dress. All right, so the first thing to assemble the dress once you have done all of your thread tracing and basting everything together is to cut it out. I was so nervous to cut into the silk, but I just went for it. So I'm just cutting generous seam allowances because all of the seam allowances are gonna get trimmed down beautifully later. But right now we need a little bit of room just in case we want to move any of the seams out a little bit. And now I'm going to carefully pin all of these thread lines together just being very careful and checking as I go through when I'm pinning to make sure that everything is aligned because I'm going to be basting these seams together. Now, this is gonna be the third layer of thread going through these pieces of fabric. But all of this work will be worth it. We want to thread baste this together to just do a simple try on to assess the fit of everything. So I'm just going directly over the lines that I've already stitched. And just remember to do all of this when the garment is flat. You wanna make sure that you're very accurate through every step of making this dress. So everything is roughly basted together. All the darts are basted. It's there, it looks kind of crazy. The seam allowances are ginormous, but it's all okay. So I tried this on and the fit was great. I only had to bring out the seams right at the waistline on the sides, a fourth of an inch on each side, so just barely. And I went ahead and basted a zipper in to get a really accurate fitting. And I just quickly stitched this in. This is an invisible zipper and you can see that it's visible there. But I just wanted to get a very close try on. So that's what the dress looks like all basted together from the outside. You can really see it starting to take shape. So now for the darts, I went ahead and finalized the darts with actual stitching on my machine. So I would just stitch them like I would normally sew on my machine, removed all of the basting threads, and then I pressed them flat to where they're balanced on each side because I don't want one side bulkier than the other. It really makes for a nice seam on that dart. Then to hold it in place, all of my darts are going to be catch stitch. So I'm gonna show you with this white colored thread so you can see the stitches. But I went through and did all of my stitching in black just because I wanted it to match as close as I can. Do a catch stitch just to hold that in place and when you're catching, into the main part, you're only going into the organza. It's only through that organza layer. Nothing is going through to the front. 
So here it is in black. It's all cut stitched down. Then when I'm ready to start sewing my side seams, I put my stitches in place on my machine and then I begin removing all of those basting threads. And make sure you leave the seams that haven't been sewn with those threads because you want your guidelines. Then I just finalize all of my stitches by ironing on one side and then the other, and then ironing those seams open flat. This really sets the stitches in place. Pressing really changes the nature of the dress. It just makes it so nice. It sets everything as it should be. And I'm using a pressing cloth that is silk organza. It really protects the fabric and it can handle any amount of heat. Now you can see one of these seams I have trimmed down about to an inch and then I've done a catch stitch into the organza layer and the seam allowance. So it's held down nicely, it moves freely, it's set into place and it's not going to move. So you just do that to any of the seams that you sew. Just keep doing that. I did that to the skirt layer. Now to finish the bodice, I needed to turn these corners and there isn't going to be a facing because it will just be, it'll add bulk and I'm going to be lining all the way to the edge. So the way that you treat the corner is you're going to place a piece of organza into the corner and stitch it into place and it'll be kind of diagonally oriented. And then I'm going to clip right up to the corner after I've done the stitching on just the corner. And then I'm going to press this way, press this way, and fold everything to the back side. And this little organza piece is going to lay flat once you've turned it. And then you'll press it at your iron. This piece has been pressed and you can see it's laying flat. And then I just trim it kind of in a little circular shape like this one right here and catch stitch that layer to the organza layer. And there is a beautifully turned corner. So you'll just do that if you have any corners. And you can see that's the start of where you turn all of the straight edges to. So you'll just get the neckline completely turned and the arm openings. Those are clipped and then everything is catch stitched. So at this point the bodice is completely turned except for that center back where the zipper will be. So the bodice is pretty much done. And I've prepared the skirt up into this point and so now with a finished bodice and a finished skirt I'm going to join them together matching all of the seams and the pattern in the center. Here it's all it's been matched. I sewed a little tiny strip of organza salvage to kind of strengthen that seam at the waist and now I'm going to prepare the center back. From the, where the bottom of the zipper will be to the bottom of this seam, I'm going to stitch that and on that little angle and I'm going to turn out this pleat. You can see that the basting lines do match up. One side is folded 
to the other side and one side kind of overlaps underneath. And with that done, I'm going to press everything and then I'm going to insert my zipper. For the zipper, I'm using an invisible zipper and I'm also sewing it in by hand. So I waxed my thread, it's two layers of thread, and just put that under your iron, press it to where all the wax melts into the thread and strengthens it, and then you can begin. So I pressed this along that basting line and then I'm going to align my zipper and the top of the zipper is about a half inch down from the top of the dress. I want to leave a space there for the hook and so I'm going to just pin everything into place before I start stitching. The way that I stitched the zipper on is with a pick stitch. So you will just stitch and then go back just a tiny, tiny dash into the fabric and forward and back just a tiny, tiny dash again. Make sure both threads are pulled tight. So I'm gonna go behind that stitch just a little bit and then forward again. And every time you do that, you'll create this little tiny stitch. It's not very visible at all. In this dress, it's practically invisible. And then for the corner of the hems on the bottom, just to round out finishing this dress, I did a mitered corner. So that's the point of the bottom. And I'm going to fold these lines onto each other and stitch them. And that's how it produces that corner. I just made a nice mitered corner on each side, opened it up on the inside to where you have an evenly distributed seam, and then I just trimmed and then catch stitched all the way around this hem. Okay, and so once that hem is finished, all of the pieces have been catch stitched into place and you could wear this dress. It's, the shell of it is finished and very secure, but we still have to put a lining because we want it to feel really nice too. Some of those stiff edges of silk, when you put the dress on, you feel them. And so you want a nice silky inside to where it feels as good as it looks. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you all about lining. If you click subscribe and the bell alert, you'll be notified whenever I post a new video, including when the lining video comes out. And if you've been watching the series from the beginning, you may remember that my birthday was the end of November and it's December now. So I did finish this dress. It is completed on the inside. I'm so excited to show you what it looks like and I did get to wear it on my birthday and it was everything I wanted it to be. It's perfect. So I'm really excited to show you the rest of this series and I'll be getting it out as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. Until next time, go get creative and make something that you love. Bye.